Within the dying planet Hoxie's Four, an abundance of valuable rocks and stone demands to be mined. No one is better equipped to recover these minerals than the irresponsibly managed employees of the Deep Rock Galactic Mining Corporation. This series will provide new employees with essential knowledge to better survive the planet's unique and hazardous biomes, completing mission objectives with their lives intact. Welcome to A Dwarf's Guide to Deep Rock Galactic, Part 5, The Dense Biozone. Located between depths of 0.8 to 0.9 kilometers, the dense biozone possesses the most vibrant palette of colors of any biome within Hoxie's 4. Every cavern is lined in a brilliant red and blue rock, inlaid with deposits of gold and nitra. Rare stalagmites of Umanite can also be found at these depths, scattered amongst the more common cubic formations of Bismore. Analysis of the rock lining these caverns suggests that the dense biozone was once completely submerged in water, an idea reinforced by the many species of coral that still adorn the caves. Despite the absence of water, the corals continue to thrive here, aided by localized downpours that regularly occur in this biome. The rain is both a blessing and a curse for dwarves, offering resistance to fire damage whilst simultaneously dimming the intensity of lit flares. A majority of the dense biozone's corals rest on the cave floor with one very unique exception. Coral Tongues This species clings to the cave walls, their coral base protecting fleshy tentacles that constantly sweep the air searching for microscopic organisms to feed on. Alongside these wall corals, bioluminescent green flowers grow in abundance, which can be very useful for identifying cave boundaries in the dark. Traversing these caverns in poor light is not advisable, as the dark conceals several species of spiky plants that can cause significant damage to a dwarf's boots. The cave urchin and trapatactus plants are the lead offenders and should be given a wide berth. As the name suggests, the dense biozone contains the most abundant array of vegetation found anywhere on Hoxis 4, rivaling even that of Azure Wild. It even has its very own species of bioluminescent plant that would not look out of place in Azure Wild's ecosystem. The Glowlit In its resting state, its petals remain closed, opening only when approached to reveal a purple orb of light. These petals will remain open unless damaged, becoming an additional light source for dwarves exploring the caves. Similar to fungus bogs, the dense biosome is home to a species of exploding plant that will cause a chain reaction when detonated. Although both these species are capable of producing devastating explosions, they differ in coloration. Dense biozones exploding plants are a vibrant blue, a contrast to the deep red of the fungus bog variety. Ejector cacti, however, are unique to the dense biozone and can be quite helpful for any dwarves caught facing a swarm. When approached, an ejector cactus will release a barrage of thorn-like spines, capable of inflicting heavy damage to any creature standing in close proximity. Dwarves should activate these plants with caution, as their spines can set off any exploding plants in the nearby area. The final species of plant found within the dense biozone also has utilization during missions. The Elevator Plant Its broad flat leaf is highly sensitive to weight changes and it will raise into the air when pressure is applied. This can help dwarves gain access to the higher levels of the caves, 
where hidden riches wait to be found. The elevator plant can also be triggered by shooting the glowing bulb connecting its leaf to the stem, though this is considered a waste of bullets. As with many of Hox's Falls caverns, the dense biozone is plagued by thick spiderwebs that hang in curtains from the ceilings. Dwarves should avoid walking through these, as they can obscure vision, making them vulnerable to ambush. These webs are often positioned around nests of glyphid eggs, which will release glyphid swarmers if damaged. Though small, these swarmers are highly aggressive and can overwhelm a single dwarf with ease. Slap those dice for luck. We're heading into part six, Crystalline Caverns. Located at depths of 0.9 to 1 km beneath the surface, the rock lining Crystalline Caverns walls is relatively tough requiring more swings of a pickaxe compared to the rock of shallower biomes. Despite the rock density, large deposits of gold and nitro can still be found here, as well as an abundance of jades and smaller quantities of bismore. Vegetation is unable to take root in this region, the hard rock prohibiting the growth of healthy roots. In its place, Smoking mineral chimneys release foul-smelling gases into the air, which can lead to acute respiratory problems with prolonged exposure. As you would expect from its name, the crystalline caverns region of Hoxis IV contains a diverse variety of crystals littered throughout its caves. Plain and pink quartz are the most common varieties, and they are often found blocking tunnels throughout the cave. Thankfully, these quartz crystals are extremely brittle and can be easily broken with a pickaxe or drill. As well as quartz, Crystalline Caverns is home to blue pillar crystals that emit a radiant light that helps dwarves navigate the darkness of the cave. These should not be confused with blue electro crystals, which will shock anything that comes into contact with them. The energy within these electro crystals can build to react with other crystals nearby, exchanging high voltage electrical bolts with each other at regular intervals. As with the dense biozone, dwarves will find spider webs hanging from the ceilings of this biome, but thankfully, no glyphid eggs. Though almost completely vacant of life, crystalline caverns does support one organic species. The walleye. This passive organism is only found within the crystalline caverns and radioactive exclusion biomes of Hoxis IV, and very little is known about its origin and purpose. Its many bloodshot eyes will follow a dwarf's progress throughout the cave. If the feeling of being watched becomes too much to bear, Dwarves can shoot one of the eyes to force it to close for a short period of time. When it comes to survival on Hoxes 4, knowledge of the environment can be just as valuable as bullets. Though most wildlife is dangerous, there are passive species that can help dwarves overcome the various hazards these biomes present. So far, our journey has taken us through six of the ten known regions of Hoxis IV, and the environments only get more hostile from here. Join us next episode as we delve into the remaining biomes, working our way from the salt pits through to the planet's magma core. As always, thank you for watching, have fun, stay safe, and leave no dwarf behind.